This morning's New Testament reading is taken from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. It can be found on pages 33 and 34 of the New Testament in the Pew Bibles. You may follow along if you wish. This is going to be the uh, basis of the pastor's sermon this morning, so pay particularly close attention. Again, that's Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10, on pages 30, 33 and 34 of the New Testament. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly, with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Thank you, Brad. Brothers and sisters, the title of the message for this morning is a question. Who goes ahead of us? Who always goes ahead of us? The answer to this question leads us to approach who Jesus, the risen Lord, really is. And as we compare the thoughts of scientists the thoughts of the world, the people who are apart from God, as we compare those thoughts, our perspective about life, we see the huge difference in perspective. And I was thinking about an illustration, and what came to my mind is what Albert Einstein was said. He said, I think, therefore, I exist. I think, therefore I exist. If I start thinking about his perspective, I notice that his thought was not really the entire, the whole perspective about life. Because living is not just existing. And then, let us reflect about this gospel. Let us reflect about Jesus Christ, the one who goes ahead of us, and who Jesus really is. What great day is this when we celebrate the resurrection of the living God, the resurrection of Jesus, the Son of God, as the King of kings, and as the Lord of lords, who is alive forever. That gives us a perfect perspective, not only about life, but about who Jesus really is. What is remarkable to notice is that those women had been at the grave site just for a few moments. They did not stay there. But the short time that they stayed there and they realized that Jesus was no longer there, that changed their lives forever. As such a realization leads us to change our lives forever. Early in the morning they went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body and they worried how they could come into the tomb. But when they got there, they were shocked that the stone had been rolled away, which changed the course of their understanding. 
Sometimes we try to do our best as they tried, but our expectation suddenly changes because the Lord is always ahead of us and His plan is always better than our plans. Actually, our Savior always takes care of everything and He goes ahead of us to make our lives easier. When the women got there, God had already solved their problem to go into the tomb. God caused an earthquake which opened the door of the tomb for them to see what was going on. That was all about God's intention to let them know what was really going on. God had already sent an angel as well from heaven to let them know what the reality of the resurrection was. And the angel brought a message. The angel said to the women, do not be afraid. He is not there. He is risen. He has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you into Galilee. You will meet him there. You will meet him there. God knows that they needed to meet Jesus Christ, which would change their life. And that was, the word of the angel was a word of hope. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy. For now they had hope to meet Jesus Christ. They quickly ran to tell the disciples what they saw. But those women needed something else. They did not need only a word from an angel. They needed something else. Suddenly Jesus appears to them on the way what really changed their lives. Jesus not only used the angel to let them know what was going on, but also came to those women on the way to Galilee to show himself in person so that they could have that personal encounter with the resurrected Lord. The women now did not only hear that Jesus was alive, but they had met Jesus Christ on the way to Galilee. Their fear was gone and they got complete joy. To experience that encounter with the resurrected Jesus is what really makes difference in our lives. We all need that kind of encounter. If Jesus would not be alive as he is, how would we live? How would be our life? Would there be any hope without his resurrection? Actually, we live by the power of his resurrection. That is what leads us to go ahead and have some good perspective about eternity. The point here is, our life becomes different and it makes sense when we have the assurance of eternal life. I really don't know how people are living without that kind of assurance when they think that everything is going to come to the end when we are there. Actually, Jesus leads us all along the way. He never leaves us alone. Actually, no Christian has ever been called to go alone. We have to understand that. No Christian has ever been called to walk alone in his or her walk of faith. Jesus guides us as king, as servant, and as God himself who saves us and rules over us. As our Lord, He exercises the power to lead us into that kind of perspective, that kind of right perspective about life. He is the only one who gives us that assurance. So my people, 
even though we know those kinds of things. We, as human beings, must have that kind of encounter. We might have, we must have that encounter with the Lord like those women so that we may live, not just exist. It is not sufficient to listen from an angel that he is alive. We must have that encounter. We must live in Christ because in Christ we have no condemnation. That is what the Bible says. Imagine what great benefit is that not to be condemned anymore when we are in Christ Jesus. But now, let me remark something important, very important for us. I want us to respond to the resurrection by building up our thoughts around two words, two essential words which are important for us to think about Easter. Comfort and confidence. Those key words are taken out of the message. Comfort and confidence. We should be comforted by the fact that our Lord always keeps His promises. Throughout the Bible we find many promises from the Old and from the New Testament. Those promises is what keeps us looking ahead and not looking behind. So the resurrection is something that should turn our thoughts around the great promises. And I took four, four of them from the Bible. One of those promises is, Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. That is the word, that is the promise that he told his disciples and the, dis and the disciples passed passed on to us that promise. When he ascended into heaven, he said he was going to prepare a place for us so that where he's going to be, there is the place where we may be also. And that is a great promise because he is going to return to rescue us. The second promise is what Jesus said. Those who believe in me Though they are dead, yet shall they live. That is another important promise. We are not going to be buried forever. We are not going to be facing death forever. But we are going to go through the same process of resurrection as Jesus did it. And the word says that the same one who raised Jesus from the tomb, from the dead, he is the one who is going to raise us up from that place. The other promise is what Jesus said, because I live, you shall live also. That goes along with the other promise. And the other promise is, lo, I am with you always. How great is the word, the promise, that Jesus is going to be walking with us always. He will never leave us alone. And the word of confidence, it is placed when we face challenges and chances of life. We have to face those challenges of life with such a confidence, not doubting, but being confident the Lord walks along with us. We hold on to these promises that enable us to look beyond the present struggles. The present struggles in life, they are not going to last forever. And those are the promises. And He is the one who gives us strength to make our way through with Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, and King, who is alive. And He is alive so that He is interceding for us. He is sitting on the right hand side of the Father, interceding for us. Every time that we want to talk to the Lord, every time that we pray, 
We ask those things in the name of Jesus Christ because He is our intercessor. He is the one who is up there interceding for us. It is the victory of Easter that helps us to move beyond that question, why? We human beings, always we ask that question, why this? Why that? Why this is happening? Why that is happening to me, to my, to my wife, to my family? That is the question that comes to our minds all the time as human beings, as frail people. But we have to move beyond that question. And brothers and sisters, because of the resurrection, the important, the most important question is how, not why. How can I face my struggles? How can I handle this loss? How can I handle this challenge? How can I handle this hurt? Only the resurrection can provide us the power to overcome what comes ahead of us. How to exercise that power. How to exercise the power that Jesus gives us through his resurrection. Relying on Jesus Christ. Not relying on our own. We do not have that power to face all the struggles, all the challenges of life. We must count on him. That is the way to exercise the power of Jesus' resurrection. If we don't live by the power of Jesus' resurrection, we are not living. We are just existing, as Albert Einstein stated. If we do not count on Jesus' power to live and overcome our struggles, we are just existing. How many people out there, they wake up, they go to work, they spend all day long working hard. They come back home. They watch the news and they go to bed. That is not all about living. That is just existing. So it is time for those who believe to stand up to be heard. Telling the nicest story that we have ever heard, which is not really story, but it is the real thing, which is the story of the risen Lord. All over again. Each year when we preach this message, we explore some different faces of that story. And today we learn that he is the one who is always going ahead of us. Ahead of us. Providing what we need, and then we may live, not just exist. So let us tell the story that has been told in this song that we are going to listen, and then when we finish listening this song, we I am going to pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us listen and, and see what that song says. You <laughs> 